title is Getting to Scale, Growing the Ecosystem Through Investments and Introducing HL Builders. So uh, I would like to introduce now uh, Liat. She's going to be our moderator. Um, so Liat, welcome to the stage. Um, she's our CEO, COO at Horizon Labs. Welcome, guys. And we've had a chance to talk a little bit about this. I think before we kick off, Let's hear a little bit about you so that uh, everyone who doesn't know you uh, can uh, hear. Why don't we start with Hervé? Uh, hello, I'm uh, Hervé Loren. Um, I'm half French, half Venezuelan. And the reason I say Venezuelan is that in 2013, my Venezuelan mother asked me to send money to Venezuela. And uh, my brother and I were deciding who actually was going to take the cash in their pocket, drop it in Caracas and coming back. And that's the moment that I discovered Bitcoin. So uh, from that, I started to do Bitcoin mining and started really doing a, a deep dive uh, within the uh, ecosystem. And uh, fast forward a, a few years after that, and I was uh, delighted to join uh, the uh, Horizon and Horizon Labs team and, uh, and advising on, the, um, on you know, what I see on the market, on the, the business opportunities that I see out there. And uh, um, on the Horizon Labs uh, side, I joined pre Yugo Labs, which is you know, really at the beginning uh, of the project itself. And then you know, seeing the, the growth of, uh, of Horizon, um, going with a narrative that I was very um, you know, interested about, which was the privacy narrative uh, within, within a public blockchain. So, thank you for having me. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Dean Steinbeck. I'm the co-founder and president at Horizon Labs. Uh, a little bit about myself. So, uh, I'm a corporate intellectual property lawyer by background. Uh, got the crypto bug in 2017, and mainly because of Rob. I'm not sure if he's out here yet. Uh, I saw Rob speaking at a crypto conference and, of course, fell in love with Rob and his vision and then, at the time, Zencash, and I think it was maybe three weeks later that I had joined the team. Uh, so I've been with the project for four and a half years, more or less, and now in my current capacity, I manage uh, our business development and uh, Rohan and, and team. Hey, um, I'm Amos Meiri. Um, Originally a trader, uh, worked for different investment firms, um, got into crypto, which is basically Bitcoin in 2012, uh, and was building colored coins. It was the first protocol on top of Bitcoin for digital assets, basically the first token mint in, in a way. Um, and um, yeah, since built different uh, companies, uh, worked with different protocols. Um, very proud of what's happening here and me uh, joining the uh, board of the Horizon Foundation um, just a few years ago. Um, that's basically it. Now I run a fund called Node Capital and we invest in distributed um, um, token projects. Thanks, Amos. Rohan Handa, Head of Business Development at Horizon Labs. Now just looking at my avatar there. Um, we just need to beef that up a bit <laughs> so it resembles a bit more like me and maybe longer hair. Other than that, I think it's a pretty good uh, replica. Um, just a quick background. Um, I got introduced to crypto by chance back in 2013, 2014. I was still at a consulting firm. One of the guys comes up is like, hey, you have a technical background, right? Can you help decipher this Ethereum paper? I'm like, sure. And then we ended up presenting it to the partners and they're like, yeah, we want to keep digging further into this and blah, blah, blah. And beyond, if that wouldn't have happened, I wouldn't have gone into the rabbit hole. Like I'm sure everyone has a story here. Uh, I just kept going deep and deep and there was like so many possibilities and the curiosity uh, in me just kept asking more questions. And one thing led to the other, um, you know, I, decided that this is a space I want to be really involved in and then uh, you know came across the opportunity at Horizon Labs was very much into the zero knowledge proofs and what are some of the use cases we can build out there and started talking to Dean and Liat and the rest of the crew almost a year ago at this point um, time flies by uh, so thank you for the opportunity and we are excited to be doing exciting stuff in this space so Thank you. So beyond uh, everyone's rabbit hole stories, which I'm sure we can uh, we can talk over at lunch, 
Actually, we're at a point with Horizon and Horizon Labs of immense scale. And one of the things that we wanted to talk about was how do we create scale in terms of getting other people to build on or to be part of the ecosystem. Now, almost you have been around, your rabbit's whole story is the longest, so, and you are very, very connected with many um, of the projects out there. What, do you, what have you seen out there as the way for projects and companies to scale in the space? Yeah, so I think um, uh, we've seen a lot of different ecosystem arise, right, in, in the past years. Um, and I kind of like put them in two boxes. One box is uh, a top-down blockchain. Um, we see following the years, like a lot of them didn't really succeed or people criticizing them, you know, not really having a community. Everything was, you know, a couple of companies who kind of like supported them. So I'll put them aside, like all of those blockchain. I'll talk about um, um, a bottom-up blockchain, okay, a ecosystem, and what I call a sandbox blockchain, right? It's something that is very open, open to different use cases, not a specific app chain, for example, who focus on a specific use case. So if we're looking at um, um, a sandbox blockchain, um, you need to build it bottom-up, up, which means that it needs to have fair distribution, uh, the way you build the chain, etc. which everything we've done so far pretty good with, with Horizon. Um, and, um, and then you basically need to start building um, the important um, applications around it to create the ecosystem. So, you know, that will be anything from an NFT marketplace to a basic AMM to a lending protocol, like all of the basic things that people need in order to start building different type of applications and bring on board entrepreneurs to start building more extended applications, um, uh, like, I don't know, uh, interest uh, rate based, uncollateral loans and like more complicated um, things other than the basic AMM and loan protocol. So um, I think that, you know, in, and in order to do that, like y you can do it yourself as a company or as an organization. You have to invest a lot in building the community and supporting them. And there are many different ways to do that from creating such an ecosystem fund or, uh, you know, um, pulling together uh, VCs who believe in the ecosystem and the future to start um, talking with projects that wants to build on top of the ecosystem and then build it. But everything needs to be bottom, bottom up, just like Rob mentioned, you know, the EVM is kind of like the first stage in order to create such a um, uh, sandbox. And, um, and then we'll start seeing the basic applications and more complicated applications being built on top. So, so what I'm hearing is beyond community, there's also the need to, to fund and invest in this. And I think, um, Hervé, maybe you can talk a little bit about what you're working on with Horizon and Horizon Labs in that space. Yeah, so, so I think one of the, the new opportunities that, that has been identified in the marketplace is, um, is the universal fund. And how, how did that ca came about? So um, Horizon and Horizon Labs, uh, probably the only thing they have in common is actually the name, but it's two very different value propositions. Um, and I'm lucky enough to you know, work on, on both projects. The, the first one, um, you know, when we're talking about the layer one platforms with privacy in its DNA and the roadmap coming up, it's very difficult for traditional investors or institutional investors to really understand what the value proposition is. They tend to rely on research papers uh, that are done by third-party organizations. Uh, that is non-existent. It's almost like you have to do your own research, like you know, Bitcoin mining 2013, Ethereum you know, five years ago, uh, the metaverse concept in 2017. You have to come with your own narrative and then says, you know, is the market gonna catch up to it? Um, so I think with that universal fund concept, you basically distill the information to be understood by investors. So the first narrative that I believe is like institutions are going to come back into the space. A few years ago, um, digital asset was non-existent for institutions. Um, I believe that this decade, they will come in a massive wave. They already have their thoughts about Bitcoin and Ethereum, but the focus is, you know, why don't they put 5% of their investable assets on new upcoming projects 
that shows on their roadmap the things that actually increase the market cap. So EVM compatibility is one of them. So the fact that the market doesn't um, you know, realize or, or you know, that this is, is coming up and value it, this for me screams um, you know, a buying opportunity. And then on the other side, the Horizon Lab side, you know, the first, the first decade from 2010 to 2020, the best performing assets was cryptocurrency. I believe this, this decade, uh, the world is going to be tokenized. And when we think about tokenizations, you need people to actually tokenize um, this. So we saw that example um, with Yugo Labs looking for somebody to actually uh, build those, you know, those infrastructures and those projects and those DAO, etc. And I believe that Web2 companies are going to get into Web3 and that traditional business all going to have to have a Web3 dis discussion. Um, so um, one is a more traditional business that is understood by value type investors and the other one more than crypto investors. So I believe that with the universal fund, we will be able to have in, a one, in one place uh, basically the, bo the best of both worlds. So it, the, the fund itself will, be, will have a, a token element and also, or a coin element and also, so investing in Horizon, the public blockchain and also in Horizon Labs in the equity part. Exactly, so half of the fund will be in Horizon token, being state, providing returns, and the other half will be in uh, Horizon Labs uh, equity, and basically um, for those who believe in the narrative that we're gonna continue, the world is gonna continue towards Web3 and towards uh, to, uh, digital uh, transformations of the landscape itself. So. That, that's a kind of a, the, the bottom of the bottom up opportunity where we just increase uh, the value of our companies and the project, but also bring more people into that ecosystem and being able to support it, like uh, bringing customers and so on. Rohan, talk a little bit about what Horizon Labs has been doing with that kind of the next layer if we're going up. Quite a lot. I don't know where to start, but <laughs> I think. The narrative that Irvi was mentioning, you know, eventually it takes a village to raise a child. And what Rob also mentioned earlier was the blockchain of blockchains ecosystem, right? On the Horizon Lab side of the things, the narrative that applies and is equivalent is creating an ecosystem of ecosystems, right? Which is you cannot launch a successful project in silo. You need other nodes and foundations around it to enable that. That could mean a lot of different things. So you said Yuga Labs, for example, right? So just running that uh, example, so you have exchanges on one side, you have investors, you have market makers, you have legal, um, you have DAO uh, creators and so forth. So all of these pieces really need to fall into place in order to build something that's successful. And I think our journey here started with Zen Ventures, which was pretty interesting in a way because we realized pretty early on that you need to f provide that right capital support to some of these projects, especially in the, uh, you know, at the point of genesis when they're still very early because that opens up doors for them from various angles, whether it be capital, finding the right resources, the right partnerships, and actually allow them to scale. And that is being realized by the industry at large that funding alone is not going to help create successful ventures within this space. You need more than that. You need the additional fuel, as I was mentioning earlier, to grow that child, that project into something that's successful, something that solves real world problems. Yeah, th thank you. So Zen Ventures was brought about in order to be able to be able to fund projects that are building on Horizon. And what it gave us was an opportunity to really get to know a lot of investors that are interested not only in building on Horizon, but also just generally in seeing what's out there. And not only do they invest, but they also bring us other projects to look at. So it really is an st the start of an ecosystem. Um, ecosystem. But your point about money not being enough, I think, is really the point of what we're working on right now. Dean, do you want to share a little bit about the Builders Fund? Yeah. So um, 
I'll be talking more about what is Horizon Labs Builders later today. Uh, it's essentially the extension of what uh, you know, Rohan has built with our Web3 advisory practice. But for purposes of this panel, so um, we, we realize as we're working with all of these uh, amazing companies who are either moving from Web2 to Web3 or already in Web3 and, and need our help uh, on the you know, professional services end, that there are incredible investment opportunities um, and that they work hand in hand so that the advisory work and that the investment opportunities go together. Uh, and so with that, Horizon Labs Builders is launching Horizon Labs Builders Fund, uh, so HLBF for, for short. Um, the details are still being worked out. The, the overarching vision is for HLBF to fund uh, and participate deeply with our advisory partners and to uh, sort of act as this flywheel effect where advisory feeds investments and investments feed advisory. And so we'll be working with all of uh, the VCs out here who are uh, our friends and partners um, to launch that. Uh, you know, probably will be some portion self-funded and some portion where we raise outside capital. But again, the goal is to really work together uh, between advisory and investments um, to help both succeed. Thank you very much for sitting in on our first kickoff panel. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Thank you.